Yeah, but it still doesn't work because we just don't. Yeah, like, they don't. If yeah. Zach, if he agreed with me, Zach would be like, I don't care. It's and then like, if he agreed with Zach, I'd say. Hey, even further to what you said before, Dad and Mum are like on the verge of divorce, and the kids trying to save the relationship. <laughs> <laughs> you know? He's just, he's just trying to make sure he's just the home is fucking glue, stable. Man. He's you the know? glue. He's the glue. Yeah. G'day, g'day, welcome back to another episode of A Lot To Talk About. It is your boy, the captain of the ship, the man in charge, Bradley J. Driver. Of course, you can call me Brad. Excited to be here. This is a round two. I know. It's Brad, the second that, half. How yeah, good. Thanks for having me, man. So, I've got two, two boys on two today. The two boys. So for those of you who have been following the podcast for a while, I hope there's a few of you, you would have seen it. So sort of like at the start of this year, wasn't it? It was one of the first days of, first yeah. days of Jen. Yeah. Um, I had the fella on my right on the podcast, Mr. Zach Lomax, the the heartthrob of the Dragons, um, the the goal kicker, the the man of the Red V, really. Oh, she's been a she's been a bit of a slippery slope to start of the season, but man, we'll be right. We'll come. We'll come good. A hundred percent. I've got no doubt. And you've got two mates here, the two boys who have been by your side from day dot. The, the guys who have been along for the journey, the housemates. Yep. Um, so maybe a little bit of dirty laundry being aired on the pod here today. I'm keen for it. So, boys, do you want to introduce yourselves? Um, I'm Josh. Um, well, we've been mates since... Or we actually used to live like two doors down yep. from me back home. So we've been mates forever, same as Jim. But, um, yeah. Um, Jimmy, um, yeah, same again. Us boys and... Maddie have been best mates ever since we were young and funnily enough my mum and Zach's mum are best mates they grew up together too yeah, went to school and all that so a Tamora connection eh yeah, yeah. I, I like and the place your, your mum and Shree actually yeah. know each other up here at Wollongong yeah, yeah. in Sydney yeah. my mum used to live in Sydney and they met up here yeah great. and then they both moved back to Tamora at different <laughs> times how weird is that so eh it's a bit and then funny. moved two hill doors and then yeah. each and then only Joy used to live with yeah, yeah and his auntie used to live with <laughs> my right. grandma and you know I just want to quickly mention the power play from Jim here with the pink shirt yeah standing out you know <laughs> oh, it's always he's, ready he's, he's smart really the rest of us are just in very plain base colours he's standing out with the pink shirt I like it well, I had a pink jumper on this morning actually <laughs> okay. and then he put the pink shirt on and I was like, I'll, like let him, I'll, let him, I'll let him have it I'll let Flip him have it so it's, it's obviously nice to have you boys in the studio here it's took me 30 minutes fucking around trying to get all the mics set up it's been a while since we've had the last time I had four people on the pod was me and a bunch of my mates just chatting shit, and it actually went really well. So yeah, no I see a similar, similar result here today. Yeah, right. Just the four of us talking shop. Bro, it's, um, Jesus, some serious conversations that we get up to at home, man. And most nights um, at the dinner table, geez, we talk about some rubbish, but um, it lead to nothing. it's good. It, you know, they, they go round and round in circles, do backflips, but man, it's it's all um, it's all good fun, man. It's um, it's good. I love living with the boys. It's it's almost like it's on. We're on a holiday all the time, so for sure. Um, you know, we sort of always keep each other grounded. We we talk a lot of a lot of rubbish, but mate, there's some good good times and some serious times, but it, it's all fun, man. You know what I love? Because you said that in the first episode of the pod, right? Like when we spoke. You said that having the boys here made it feel a little bit more like home, especially when times aren't, you know, because you're in a very up-down career, right? A career that you win in one week, you might have a tough loss the next, and sometimes, you know, the media puts that on you, the fans put that on you. It's not always easy to be in the spotlight as a footy player, especially in this day and age with so much media and so much opportunity on social for people to... To, to have their voice and have their say. So I can imagine having these two lads at home sort of helps ground you and keep you up on the right track. Bro, right, for sure. Like, it, it just sort of shoots it back. Like, you know, it, it it's, you, you're a rugby league player, but I mean, you're, you're a person first and, and that's what it's always been like. And to be able to grow up with the boys and, um, you know, the boys love their footy too. Don't get me wrong. It's, it's um, mm. Jimbo, Jimbo loves listen to footy all the time and um, Joshy probably not so much Jimmy's actually going back to play for tomorrow and oh, nice. um, yeah. so he's going back there to play each week but I mean don't be wrong like you know you, you it's there's always it's always footy 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 like every 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 day I'm obviously there but especially after a loss man like to come back and and the boys just sort of 
just bring you back down to you know what life's about and it's just it's just about not taking everything so serious and and that's what it's all about like we just we have a joke man and um you know there's there's more to there's more to life than just footy man and oh, yeah. um you know i feel like when when everything's going good at home it's it makes footy easier it makes footy more enjoyable and as i said it's just like being at home on a holiday all the time man it's good for sure so you know, let's let's ask the hard questions first up. You boys both Dragon supporters? No. Yeah, I am. Hey, I like it. So who do you support? We're diehard Roosters supporter. Fuck yeah. I'm a Roosters fan too. Wait, what happened in 2010? Don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. Right, dude, that's a, that's a long time ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We always talk so about that's it. That's a long time ago. I'm, I'm a Chooks there. man through and through. Like, oh. I was named after Freddie, after Brad Fitt last night. <laughs> My old man was jealous. a big Brad Fitt Very fan. Jealous. So... Um, I didn't get any of the skill. <laughs> like, it didn't carry on. But, right, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I got the carry on, really, oh, the, the Freddie chat. So um, Most the Anzac Day test. It's the best, oh, best game of yeah. the, best the game year for me year. because it's a win-win. It's <laughs> Dragon, if Dragons win, you know, yeah, go Zach. If Bruce yeah. is win, you yeah. You know what? I'll say, <laughs> after meeting this lad at the start of this year, because I've, I've been lucky to meet a couple of NRL boys like over the course of the pod. And because I don't just chat to athletes, I chat to heaps of different people. Yep. Sort of meet people from all walks of life. And like I, I got on really good with you. I felt like we connected off the back of like being very tight-knit family boys and like probably similar ages too and you know, living in this area. I feel like I got on really good with you and I said, bold statement, because I used to hate Saints. <laughs> right and I was like because all you know all my family were Saints supporters man my dad yeah. had Chooks boys so we used to hate Saints and I said Fuck, I reckon I'm you know they're my second team this year oh, and I want to see Zachy go well you know so I've been, I've been watching all the games and you're right the Anzac Day test yeah. it's one of those games of footy where it doesn't matter where both teams are on the ladder it's always a great game yeah, 100%. always a great contest because there's so much pride in a game like that mm. yeah Quickly talk about that because that's coming up soon. Like that's yep. going to be that'll probably the week after this releases. Yeah. And that's a game that obviously you go into with a lot of emotion. Like it's a, it's a special day, and you've been blessed to play. You know, your whole professional career, you've been in that dragon side. So that's a part of your year, every year. Talk to us like, what does it feel like running out on the field in that moment? Mate, without a doubt, the best game of the year without a doubt, and obviously. My fam and, and all that come down and, and friends and the boys have been there and um, mate, but just to see the emotion and, and, and what goes into it. We have ex-war veterans that, that come in and speak to us during the week and, and mm. talk to us about what, what's going on at war and the sacrifices that, that they've made, their families have made and but it's it's just, just to see some of the stuff that, that, that's happened and, and that are, that's been laid down before us, man, it's... Um, yeah, it's, it's unreal. And the day is just, you know, you're just buzzing the whole day. And then especially yeah, when you walk out and then you hear the last post. And um, so I always go to the um, the dawn, dawn service, service in the morning. Like I love going to the dawn services. Yeah, so um, we, I normally just go in here and, um, bro, the, the whole day is mad. Like, I mean, well, since, since I've sort of um, been 18, I've, well, since I've been old enough to go to the pub, I haven't been able to play two up. So like, am I... <laughs> My auntie is um is in the navy, and um so it's like, and she's been in the navy for thirty years, and mm. so it's like the best day for them. Like they they, they just sort of have a day awesome. out, and they all all go on the beers and, and that. And um, I'd love to just be able to go and spend spend the um, the day with her. And um, but man, at the same time, like to to go and play footy on the day, it's it's mad. It's you, so good. You know what? It's funny you say that because, like, I'm 25, right? I'm, an, I'm, fuck, I'm 26 next week. I'm an old dog, right? Jeez. And, fuck, I'm getting on, man, getting experienced. That's what I like to call it. But, weathered. I'm, yeah, weathered. weathered, more weathered. like it, you know. um, I've, n- I've never played a game of tour because every yeah. year my pop was in the National Service, so every year he marches. It was only last year, it was the first year that with his knees and his stroke, he's, he's not been able to march, right? So, Normally, like, I make a thing of going to the dawn service with Pop. He lives below me now, so yeah, walk up there too. with him, um, watch the dawn service, and then I go watch him march. Because I'm like, when they're getting to that age, you're like, you never know when their last one's going to be. That's it. And so, like, I always made a thing of trying to go and watch that. And, you know, it's a day for him where, like you said, him and his mates are together. They're yeah. having a beer. They're having a great time. I've always tried to spend it with Pop. 
Um, but now he's not as mobile, so he just he parks up for the footy and goes to the dawn service. And so this year I might have to try my luck. I don't mind it. 50-50 odds. Oh, it's probably my best chance yeah. when it comes to a punt. You, you, no, you no, him the, and Tyler. Yeah, yeah, yeah me and Tyler went up last year. We got caught the train up. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> we caught the train up and um, did a little pub crawl before the game. Yeah, nice. We played a bit of two up up there. It was definitely different. Like, we played plenty of two up back home, but like, back home's like you'll probably get 20 people playing. 20 people. Yeah. <laughs> three, three, three of them are your cousins. Yeah. yeah. And you just play with your mates. We're up there, you're just stealing everyone's money that you don't know, so it yeah, feels better. It feels better. But, um... You were no, going to be your last 50, were you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, nah, it was, um... It was different. It was good. There was heaps of Dragon supporters there, but I loved it. Because they were all just singing about well, the you, Dragons. Did you have so the I was wearing... last year, didn't we? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Did you have your Roosters jersey on? Yeah. Yeah. It yeah, was yeah. just, a, it was good. It was very different, but it was yeah, mad. I bet. definitely want to do it again this I year. I bet. Bit of context for the listeners and the viewers. So, what do you boys do for for a living, for a craft? Well, I'm a mechanic by trade, yeah. like a diesel mechanic, but I'm up here doing security at the moment. Yeah, so I do that, and um, with the security mob that do the dragons. Yeah, nice. So I actually got the job like, yeah. through no one. Yeah, but just let anyone slip through and does that fucking touch him up a bit just to bring him back down to earth? <laughs> no, I'll do you that. Every, I'll do that every night. I'll do that every oh, afternoon oh, when we yeah, t- when we yeah. train boxing at home. Yeah, so. okay, okay. Uh, so go on. What what story we got here? <laughs> no, bro. There's, there's, there's something going stories. on here. No, nah, there's heaps of stories of Josh, Joshy and I. And <laughs> you, you tell the story. Yeah, you tell come the story. On. No, there's just heaps times where you know, both being young, being young kids and that. Like we're in, we're in each other's pockets. Forever and ever and ever and ever. Yeah. And like, we had some fights. Some dust some, up? Yeah, some serious oh, fights. Some serious. some serious fights where, you know, there was, there was tears. Yeah. I reckon Mark's, the mark of a good like friendship, though, is being able to have a dust up. 100%. And then be sweet after it. Yeah. Mm. Oh, we, we have, we, <laughs> we have disagreeing with the other, even the other week, like, But you, you tell it, you tell the story, bro. You tell the story. Which one? Uh, are you talking about training? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you tell it. I don't know which one you're talking about. The one about. that you left. The ball oh, <laughs> everyone loves to hear this story. Yeah, go on. And I hate telling it. But anyway, me and Zach... Tell it how you tell it. Yeah. <laughs> but it's so, nasty. I always... I never, I never got hot until I was like probably 16. Yeah. So, so I was like a code. short, fat kid. And Zach always used to try to push me and push me and push me playing football. <laughs> I was, mate, I was probably a boy. He was a bully. Yeah. He was a downright bully. To Everyone used to, I, I, just to me, to, to him. just yeah. to me. <laughs> I and, think best. I yeah, think was and um, sort of, so we were at training this one, one Tuesday, I think it was, and we were doing like a one-on-one defence and attack drill. So one person had the ball and one person tackled, and yeah. Zach always chose me, always. I was like, great. No one wanted to go with Zach. No one wanted to go with Zach. Yeah, no. okay. I always just got put with him. So anyway, he drilled me, absolutely drilled me. I'm laying on the ground, and I had the shit, and walked back. And he goes, if you run harder and don't pull the handbrake on and be a little bitch, I won't hit you. Like, I won't hit you that bad. So I got all the courage up, and I ran as hard as I could. Mind you, I had little chode legs, so it wasn't very fast. And anyway, he launched me, absolutely launched me put me on my ass again. I felt like this big. So I got up and I pegged the, the pegged the ball and he caught it. One end. And like in That's the same oh, fuck. in the same motion he threw it straight back and got me straight on the button. And like blood just started coming out of my nose. I just started eyes started watering and I was like no, nah, you know what? I'm going home. So I just packed me kid up, kicked me boots off and just walked off home. And that's great. Everyone oh, loves hearing that story. Oh man, it's, it's like in one of those movies. It's like something from a movie where like they peg the ball at someone, yeah. they catch it, and then oh, you're like, oh, no, he just fast. caught it and in the same motion oh, threw it back I at felt, me. I felt How old were you at this point? Oh, 14, 14, 14, 14, 13, 14, 13, yeah. 14, 13, yeah. yeah something so the like one thing he said in the in the first pod was like, he's like, I'm a competitive fella. So, oh. yeah. <laughs> hey. he's very competitive. Mm. If he's winning, he's on top of the world, and he'll give you that much shit. But when he's losing, you can't speak to him otherwise you get your head torn off. Yeah, yeah. that's true. You know what, though? That this is something that... I don't know if we spoke about this in the first pod. We might have spoke about it off camera. Something that I recognise, right, is... Like, one of the dudes on the wall over there, the pe- people watching wouldn't be able to see it, but on the wall, Kobe Bryant. Like, you listen to stories of guys like 
him and MJ. Yeah. And there's there's one dude, right, who was telling this story about Kobe. And I think it was a game against um, MJ, like late in MJ's career, where MJ just like, they beat him. And he said to Kobe, like, you can wear the jersey, um, but you'll ne- like, it'll never fit. You can, well, like you, can, we, you, can, you can wear the yeah. shoes, but you never yeah, fill them. You never yeah. fill them, yeah. yeah. And Kobe didn't speak to anyone at training for yeah. two weeks until they played him again. Like, didn't speak to any of his teammates. Comes out and puts 50 something on in that game against MJ. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, it's that competitive nature that like, makes someone great. Yeah. And, and, you know, we had a conversation, and this wasn't me you know, blowing smoke up your ass, but I think like, you're one of the best centers in the game. And you're still young, and you've still got so much time. And I think that mentality will take you to a point where, you know, you, you're going to be one of the one of the people that people remember putting on that centre jersey. Bro, it was, um, like, yeah, competitive, like the competitiveness back home, Jesus Christ. There was, man, we used to get in some serious, like, jeez, I was a grumpy bastard sometimes. Oh, man. We'd lose oh. a game and he'd be crying straight after the game just to mum yeah. and dad, just... I don't want to play, blah, 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 this and that. And then he'd be sweet, bloody half an hour later and wanted to... I look, back, up and I look back now and think, you know, back then, it was just like, he was just always trying to... He expected better from everyone else. Yeah. And, yeah. like, back then, we were all like, well, piss off, you yeah. know? You but now, don't know, now you, you realise you're back. All he just was trying to do was, like, make everyone as good as he wanted to be. So like everyone could be as good and we could all be better together. Yeah. Like he sure. just wanted to push everyone to be as better as best as they could be. Hindsight's a funny thing like it that, is. Isn't like it? back then no one like Zach was pretty misunderstood when he yeah. was younger. Yeah. He got like, shit from everyone, like even parents would go off at him. Yeah. Playing cricket they used to call him Zach Throwmax. Because yeah. they used to <laughs> when he bowled the That's ball great. when he bowled the ball it looked like he like sort of chucked it but yeah. it was just the way his action was and he'd get that much shit off parents and that and it was just yeah he took it really well like um sort of in public and that but sort of behind closed doors it i think it hit him pretty hard but yeah, i think sure. that's the way like he's grown up now and i think that stuff that happened when he was younger is benefit for him now like just to you know it's it's true it's it's true and i think you know i was probably as most young fellas in Oz are, right? Like, when you're young, sport's a big part of your life. Yeah. My old man was always tough on me. My old man was a good athlete, right? Like, ran 200 and something Ks, 220 Ks in three days. Uh, like, uh, you were telling me that last week. Right. That's fucking off the head, bro. No, so <laughs> That's Forrest Gump. So, because I don't know if you boys know, but I've got cystic fibrosis, right? Yeah. So, um, my old boy, when I was two, wanted to do a charity event. Him and my mum wanted to raise money for CF. So, they'd done a bunch of... Um, sort of like raffle nights and auction nights and mum organised a bunch of that stuff and then dad, my uncle Tez and a couple of marathon runners were going to run three ultra marathons three days in a row so they went 68 k's three days in a row for, for CF to raise a bunch of money and my old boy was working three jobs playing, getting paid to play first grade for West and Port yeah. locally here and like so working four jobs essentially he was earning good coin back then, like 500 a win, 250 a loss. That's not bad back in that's the day. Good, that's right. Yeah. That's not now, right? Yeah. No, that's, so like, like, that's like most. Yeah, it's very similar to nowadays, like club footy. Yeah, so he was like yeah. an outside back and ended up playing lock because he was a great tackler and just a hard yeah. player. But he worked He worked very hard, man. And then he wanted to do this event and he'd quit footy at this stage because, you know, he'd build a house for the family and he. Um, Mate, like, just some of the stuff he tells me about, like, I'm like, I can understand why he was hard on me as a kid, athletically. Yeah. And I thrive because of it. Like, I was 100%. a good sprinter, like, state champion sprinter when I was younger. And and I look back now, right, and, you know, great example, two years ago when I ran my first marathon. And he was beside me on the bike the whole way. And it was a tough trot there. Like, I'd had really bad bleeds in my lungs a month before and I'd been in hospital and I wasn't supposed to run. And... Crossing the finish line and having him in my ear, I could understand it. Like, for him, he seen, like, what I had with CF as being something that crippled most kids and and stopped most kids from doing anything athletic. He was so hard on me because he knew that, like, that was my way out. That was a way that I was going to get a chance to be super healthy once I got older. 
and it's it's like that hindsight like you said you look back and you're like i understand that now yeah i understand why he pushed me because had he have not maybe i wouldn't have believed in myself as much as i did yeah and i fucking thought i was going to be the best at everything yeah you know what i mean i think it's that mindset that Mm. like now now i'm not that good at any of it Um, i just have i just have yarns you know but (laughs) like it's kind of that mindset that gets you to where you are now and i think that's that's everything bro like what you your mind's everything man and um it truly I, is to to be honest i don't think like mum and dad and you boys could probably probably um a bit say too but i don't think mum and dad really forced me to not really to, it was more to you like, and because hater you and hater were sort of real competitive with each other yeah that's sort of what drove you i think and like I just, I think mum and dad just sort of accepted it for what it was and they, and they, they knew that it, that it probably put a few people offside and they knew that, you know, it, like dad used to get the shit. You were very, they were very humble about what you did, like they never Yeah, like uh, dad after every game would never, like still to this day, like mum, mum still says, oh mate, you, mate, you had, a, you had a good game, she's got no idea about footy, right? <laughs> mum's got no idea about footy. And, um, but dad, dad will still be like, um, every time, like finish a game, like that is obviously um, you know proud as punch, and um, but that just shake my hand, and that, that's pretty much it. Like, yeah, you know, give me a cuddle, and um, but that's yeah, mad. Never, never really. It's it's just more more talk about just just whatever, man. Like it's not really footy chat. Dad just sort of rings me every day, sees it, sees how I'm going. But I I don't think that mum and dad always they they never drove anything into me dad that was just sort of whatever it is it's just mate it's just hard work more intrinsic dedication from that, but that, if you're that, interested in it that like kind of stuff and um but i mean i don't think my mentality is ever going to change like we used to do swimming carnivals and oh. athletic carnivals and there's, there's, there's not the there's not camp. one thing that we're not all competitive towards yeah, like That's any mad. sport Even, like yeah. we play every year right boxing day test mm. right so we we have, we have a Winners? cricket match we don't the boxing that. day test yeah, okay. and it's me and stimo like our yeah. other mate versus him and him yeah anyway me and stimo usually, usually lose that's probably Every half result. my fault yeah you know a couple of ducks and a couple yeah, wides okay. on my, my behalf but like we're so <laughs> competitive like we've got a book we used to have yeah we used to have two ipads set up one behind the stumps and one just in case like, like yeah, for, for LBW. Nicks, for Nicks yeah. and LBW that's legit. mad it's it's legit, legit, we're, right. we go full is on is this back home yeah, yeah this so is back home the SCD still yeah. cricket ground yeah. yeah okay I like it so yeah we're we're pretty um, yeah competitive in everything 100% we you and me definitely do not contribute at all mm. and Zach no, and Stimo it's pretty low Stimo's a pretty good yeah. cricketer yeah. it's we dead set Jimmy and I win every time it's yeah it's, ba- it's basically <laughs> if I have a really good game. It's yeah. we win. Yeah, pretty much whoever has a better game out of these two, it yeah. sort of dictates a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Sort of think, yeah. Because if we get a couple of runs and it, you know, it I contributes. normally always bowl him out because you know you just can't, <laughs> you can't pace. Well, are we talk, are we talking pace or a bit of spin? No, we've we, we've we, um we, we've adapted a um a bit of a swing ball the last yeah. couple of years. Yeah, we yeah, started we off with a normal tennis ball. You fire it right up with some yeah. serious tape on it. Yeah. yeah, does some movement. Does some movement. Put a bit um, of a seam on it just to make it a bit yeah, harder. Nice. We've um we've come come a fair way from the first year we played, but oh, we've I still like we've still got the same ball. Like it's a full oh. cricket scoring. I think book. we started 2018. Yeah, yeah. See, I only had really one mate growing up that was like right into his cricket, Blakey, and Blakey's still a good cricketer. Plays like local first grade, and um, like we played a bit growing up, but then I never really sort of stayed interested in it just because not a lot of my mates did. Mm. And See, probably we, something we, different for us is back all we back have home sports. is sport. Yeah. yeah. So like. We'd have a sport for like every day of the week. So we all played basketball. Yeah. We all played cricket. Yeah, we all played Friday. rugby league. We all played rugby union. But we'd play league on Saturdays, union on Sundays, you know, and then golf. we'd play golf mm. with just sport. Because there's hear a basketball nothing story? else to do. So I never played in my life, right? Except, aside from like PE at school. Yeah. Mate of mine goes to me, because I just always loved doing anything athletic. I was about 16, he goes, oh, we start the basketball side. Do you want to play? I'm like, yeah, fuck yeah. Like, I was boxing, I think I was boxing twice a week, playing Oz Tag twice, and I was like, basketball fills the fifth night, you know what I mean? So, 
rocked up the first game. I've got no idea. He goes, so we're going to run a play off the start. And I go, fuck, I didn't even know there were plays in basketball, right? And he goes, all I need you to do is sweep around the back here, find yourself on the three-point line, corner, take a shot. Yeah. I'm like, sweet. Straight off the bat, we get the ball. He goes, yeah, run the play. I fucking run around, get the ball, just sink it, three. I'm like, yeah. Gun, <laughs> gun no, I'm good at this. Gun. And he's going, same thing, reverse side. I'm like, okay, sweet. So we get the ball back. Same thing, switch three. I'm like, holy cunt, I'm good at basketball. Right? Yeah, probably. And I'm talking, the other team, they're kind of looking around like, fuck, who's this kid, right? <laughs> we get the ball back next play, step back, jumper two, right? And I'm like, holy fuck. I've sunk all three. I've never, three for three. never played basketball this well in my life. To the point where the other team call a timeout, they're rattled, right? <laughs> they're fucking rattled. They're like, we need to regroup, right? And I'm walking off the field doing the bron like, <laughs> standing there going, I'm fucking built for this. I'm made for this. And my old boy goes, fuck, you're actually all right at this, eh? No bullshit. I did not score a point for the rest of the season after that. <laughs> and I got ejected from every game. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, fuck, what a downfall. Eh? That, that, that was probably more like us two. We, um, we got fouled so many times. Oh. Yeah, that, it, it just turned into a footy match. Like, well, it gets yeah, frustrating it's, when you're yeah, against good players, and right? It's, it's like I was telling you, like, it just shits me. Yeah. Like, yeah. It, just, oh. it just aggravates me. Get too competitive me, and, like, yeah. You get too competitive and it annoys you. And then you, you just, just want to run over them. And, yeah, yeah. yeah. It just gets, you, you know, it just gets shitty, bro. But, bro, as, as the boys were saying, like, the competitive side back home, like, as as we were saying, it's, it's just sport, religiously. Like, yeah. back home is just, Every different sport you could think of, seven days a week, there was always there was always something happening. Like we're always outside, man. And even when we go back, like we're there's not really so a the, day the where we just yeah, yeah. The boys have only just moved up. I'm saying the last, Joshy moved down a little bit earlier, probably close to a year ago now. Yeah. <coughs> and um, in the Shaw Cove Palace, the Jimbo moved well, down. We're back in Mangerton. Yeah, we're back there. Oh, there Mango for, days. Yeah. for a little bit. And, Man- uh, Mangerton's and, uh, nice, eh? It was a good spot there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Spot. yeah, great yeah, we, spot. Yeah, so we're, we're down in Shell Cove now, and um, so Jimbo moved down. Can oh, I? yeah, Just start of the year. So, there. bro, but every time we 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 go back, like it was, when we go straight to the golf course. Yeah. Or you know, kick a footy, go, go kick some goals. We go or we go kick a footy. Like it was just. Man, that, that's all we do. Like it just sort of. It's, it's a way of life. It, here, yeah, guys, yeah. That, that, that's just what it's always been, and um, it, it's, it's always, it's always to see who's the best though. Yeah, every, for sure. Every time it's, it's always every, like, I live and, growing up, swimming carnivals. Swimming carnivals, athletic carnivals. He only ribbons he got were blue. Okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> My whole. Cover it, Josh used to get the, the I've got, the, I got the white ones the, with the, a little the turtle the, sticker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we had white ones with caterpillars on them. Yeah, rainbow yeah. caterpillars. Rainbow <laughs> caterpillars. And all my wardrobe's just full full of red ribbons. Second. Yeah. Always. And then till he left in mm-hmm. year ten to go up come up here, that's when I got my so blue ribbons. So you boys ribbons. are all same age. Yep. Yeah. That's very awesome. So you went to school together, yeah. yeah. Yeah, to see Edwin, that's to see nine. that's mad because I still got a couple of mates because I went to a smaller school here. Yeah, like it was a um, preschool to year twelve, right? It's a private school, so it's like me and all my mates stayed together, and I've got a couple of mates who like we were boys from the age of four. So like it's mad, like and we're still all great mates yeah. today. We're all at the um, we were watching you play the other day actually yeah. at the pub. Right. So like it's mad when you got that long term because mm. you can go back to all yeah. those moments. That's the best. Yeah, but it's um. No yeah, one we, quite we, understands when we have chats. No, that's, that's it's, the thing, It's bro, like, so good, like, just um, unique and... Yeah. So let's talk about it. Right? All living in the same house, right? On on the count of three, who's the worst housemate? One, two, three. Josh. Jimmy. Jimmy. Okay, it's two votes for Jimmy. So the way... Well, I was talking to, like, our parents when I went back <laughs> home the other day. And the way I explained it is... It's true. So Zach's the dad of the family, because yeah. he goes to work every day. Every day he goes to work, comes back home in the afternoon. I'm the mother, because yeah. I normally do the washing. Oh, we all pitch in, but because yeah. I'm home, I work shift work, so I'm home yeah. like days and that. So I do the washing and dinner's cooked, and and okay. then Jimmy's so the you're kid. The mom. I'm the mum, so, and Jimmy's the kid. So he's the one that we're always telling to pick his shit up and, yeah, you know, okay. what do you want for dinner because he's so yeah. picky and... Um, See, bro, Jimmy would have... Jimmy would have Vegemite on toast every night. Every yeah, night. Every night fast. for dinner or, or he'd have a chicken sensor. 
Yeah. Back, back yeah, home, like, I barely ate dinner. If, I, if it was in front of me, I'd eat it. But if like, I, I, I'm too lazy to cook. Yeah, literally. Okay. Bro, the, and and why Jimmy is like this is because Muddy um, Heather. Yeah. Is has like serious OCD. So like, if they're gonna have dinner, she she'll have everything done by one o'clock. Is this your mom? In the fridge, yeah. wrapped, yeah. everything, everything ready. She's just yeah. the proper, like the cleanest freak ever. Yeah. And like Jimmy would never have to clean anything, never had to do anything in his life. Yeah. So and like until I was twenty three. Until until yeah. literally just before. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. um, I've done well. Jimmy's been outstanding. I've done well. And like and it leaps and bounds, <laughs> ahead of where of where <laughs> I thought where I thought he'd be. He'd, yeah. he'd come back. Don't be wrong. He still he still comes back and washes his clothes and, and puts his dryer on at twelve o'clock at night, like because <laughs> yeah. he does he doesn't he doesn't do it during the day. Um, and don't be wrong. He's he's still got forty eight up and goes and sit beside his bed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But okay. It's right. He's he's getting there. <laughs> up and the, go, kid. Where's but like kid? the food situation, bro. Like, cause yeah. cause this surprises me. I, I will say, cause you you've talked yourself up a little bit about being a chef, right? Yeah. So I taught so, him how to cook. That's, a, that's definitely a lie. I if taught Jimmy him. can back me up, it's definitely a lie. I taught him lie. how to cook. Okay. Gordon Ramsay so, taught you how to cook. Josh, Josh grew up like with, um, so his mum was always at work, and yeah. um, obviously Rod, Rod was working too, and um, so Josh from a young age just had to come back and, and cook a lot okay. of a lot of the time. How Jeez. young do you reckon you were when you sort of? Um, you been probably 13, 14 when you were yeah, you nah, still cooking. Nah, you would have been nearly younger than that. Yeah, so me, like, my dad was pretty sick for a long time. Okay. And, um, oh, he could still get around and do things. Yeah. But, so mum was the worker. Is he, is he mum, still with us? Or no, he passed, passed away six years ago yeah, now. Yeah, sorry to hear. Jeez. No, that's fine. Um, One of the greats, Rodney. Mm. Oh. <laughs> hard work Kendrick sometimes. Kendrick yeah. a, a VB. Yeah. Loves it. Um, oh, yeah. Hard work sometimes. Yeah. Ask Josh what his favourite beer is. Which favourite beer? VB. VB. Yeah. Rubbish! <laughs> <laughs> see, I don't, I don't drink. VB's not so too I bad. Know, I don't even know. Uh, bro, have you had that better beer? I oh, see, I don't drink because I've got liver disease. Yeah, well, yeah, fair. Mm, that probably, but I've heard it's good. No, yeah, it is good. I'm interrupting, sorry, bro. No, it's all right. Um, so, like, I've cooked and not cleaned. I hate cleaning. Like, yeah. dishes and that. Yeah. It's like I'm allergic to it. But <laughs> but I've cooked from a young age, so like I was, I'm always used to cooking. And what's your go to? I do a bit of everything. I love cooking yeah. Asian food. I just love okay. it, like the balance and that. Uh, trying to find the, the right balance. balance. What a word, this guy. <laughs> That's I just such love a chef cooking. thing to say. <laughs> he dribbles. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Dribbles. Honestly. That, that's a big so, call. That's so, he dribbles. He's a dribbler. So so Zach I've used never to come once been in the kitchen and gone... Good balance. Yeah, oh, <laughs> yeah no, you can say that. <laughs> Mate, you, you bake with a recipe, you cook with your heart. Oh, yeah, I like that. that. I like that. Let's do it. He's, he's written a few of these down on the way in here. <laughs> sure. Um, sure. Zach used to come over to my house and we used to cook up a storm, always. Yeah. Like, we'd, and then, like, we just, every night we'd cook something. Yeah. Like, we'd just find something and we'd cook it. We used to make mad pizzas back yeah. in the day. I'll make it. I'm going to say, I'll make a grouse pizza. We used to, yeah. yeah, I reckon. I reckon mine could be the best. Yeah, right. The best well, going. That's, that's a huge call. But there's that's a, a huge a call. Big call. Do you, you obviously make your own dough? Nah. Oh. What? What? Fucking settle down, boys. I don't know that much. What, what do you mean? Yeah. Time. <laughs> you take. You take the piss off. I just get the lead bread, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah, right. right. So it's oh, a Domino's right. pizza. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I make the best. I make the best. So, I make, I make the, the best be- fast pizza. I make the best pizza. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, okay. Know. Okay. I make, yeah. Right. You'll I, have to I, teach I, me how to I make the dough. I don't know. It's yeah. It's pretty easy. So we actually yeah. only made like we made that one day back home. We just slapped mm. it together. We did did it completely wrong. And it just oh. worked out. Can I, can I say a few people commented on the YouTube video saying has Lowy made you a brisket? Yeah. Right. Mate. I need it. That, that yeah. was. A, I haven't had one yet. Yeah. Josh knows I'm, I'm, I'm good at smoking meats. He knows I'm good. And don't well, he will take that. He can take that. Oh, I can't do it. Me no. and Hado tried to yeah. tried to do one last year and we thought we went gun at it and then we tried to cut it up and it was still tough as. Mm. And we're like... There's an art to it. There's, know, there's definitely know, yeah. an art to it. Josh is definitely a good cook. No ifs or buts about it. Jimmy... Zero if you want to meet Pyre, come to me. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Jimbo's, Jimbo's got no idea. Like me and Zach threw a, um, a roast pork on the other day. 
And Jimmy was like, oh, help. I'm like, awesome. Cut the veggies up, cut some carrots up, put them in there. And he's, I was like, yeah, right. So he's going to do the veggies, sweet. Anyway, pull the pork out, it's ready to go. He left the veggies in there, cut the pork up, open the thing up, smoke everywhere. Veggies burnt to a crisp. Charcoal veggies, no, eh? the, the potatoes are good. <laughs> the potatoes were right, because they were underneath the other ones. Yeah, but the, okay. the carrots were... Everything else shielded the potatoes from the fucking heat of the oven. Yeah, I'll the put carrots an Instagram had, story up. They were like, black. There what, was no yeah. origin. What, what was charcoal it? Charcoal carrots. Yeah. What was it? Like, people were like, what was the what, stuff? What that, is like, that like, dish right there? Yeah, yeah. Like well, if Jimmy's going to make, make a roast, so that... <laughs> You, you know you know how to make roast potatoes. Doesn't they like roast yeah. veggies. Yeah. 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 So, <coughs> but Jimmy Jimmy's idea of roast roast veggies is you've got to you pretty much got to deep fry them. So in, in his pan he puts about four liters of oil in them so yeah. that they're seriously crunchy. They're the yeah. best. You're having six thousand calories with yeah. your potatoes, yeah. But how, so when when you have a roast, like, what would you normally do like a meat? How would you normally like like leg of lamb or something? Yeah, or exactly. Like, yeah. So anyway. <laughs> Jimmy, last time Jimmy, last time Jimmy cooked his um, cooked his roast, he goes, right, I'll, I'll put a roast on for the boys. So knows how to make roast veggies. That's it. Yeah. Don't tell Do me he's done the Woolies barbecue chill. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's him, bro. That, that's, his, that's, that's his dinner. That's how he cooks. Yeah. Rings, rings Josh on the way and goes, hey, bro, you, you on your way? Yeah, bro. Right, um, just drop oh, in and grab another. Can you just ring into and grab a couple of barbecue chooks? Yeah. And I was like, what the, what the fuck is there not that? enough meat for the boys? Wait, what do you need that for? And he goes, he goes no, that is the meat. That is the meat. <laughs> that, that's, oh. that's the roast. <laughs> you think he's making sandwiches for the next day? Yeah, I was like, what, what, do you not have enough meat? Because we invited a few boys around. We went and played poker. And yeah, <laughs> and he's like, no, just grab like three bar, two barbecue mm. chooks. And I was like, what for? <laughs> and he's like, he said roast chook. He calls them roast yeah. chooks. And I was well, like, that's only because of mum. Yeah, mum's yeah. got no variety of oh, food. Oh, it just made me laugh. Yeah. Yeah. So, so how many bowls of tomato sauce did you put out on the table? <laughs> yeah, tomato sauce and just kid. Yeah, it's a problem. Yeah, it's a problem. You can tell. You can. When he said Vegemite toast, I was like, I know what this bloke's about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, Vegemite he's and tomato sauce. Well, yeah, everything. You put tomato sauce of, on um, everything. Vegemite on toast yesterday. Yeah, you did. Yeah. You know what? My my go to. We spoke about this. My go to is peanut butter and poached eggs on toast. Yeah, it is good. Great. Yeah, it is good. Never had that. Really good. We good. actually got it as a special on the menu here one weekend. <laughs> mm, yeah, nice. So, because we're doing it a fair bit, they called it The Experience because the podcast used to be called The Experience. Yeah. Um, and it was like, they'd done this kind of like twist on it where there was like, um, they scrambled eggs with peanut butter, chilli and something else, had a little Thai salad on the side. Yeah, nice. Like, it went alright, eh? Yeah. The salad no, was yeah, good. That's good. Um, Blake Laurie eats a fair bit too. Yeah. Because um, I, I used to have a fair bit. Um... Trial Sergeant Wilson loves it, like when he was when he was boxing and that. And yeah. Into it. What the peanut butter and egg? Yeah, it's peanut butter and poached eggs. Yeah. yeah. Oh. My my ramen yeah. cake's got me on. Have you had it? I've heard of it. I've never had it. It's all those Vegemite with it. Vegemite's too. good too. Yeah. It's salty, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. but bro, the Jim, Jimbo with the with like um. All the Very basic. Yeah, he's um <laughs> he's pretty basic. Like I mean, we'll we'll try and mix it up a little bit and say for instance, Jimmy never knew what bro- um broccolini was. <laughs> So anyway, we, okay. have, we have broccolini and, you know, we just sort of marinate in like a couple of, you've got some ABC sauce, some oyster sauce, a um, bit of soy sauce on it, yeah. and a bit of garlic and, um, you know, and then you just fry on that and Jimmy's like, fuck, man, what, what, that's mad. Like, and then so every time we have dinner now, he goes, oh, you, let's do broccolini, you want to do broccolini? Yeah, okay. So like that, that, you, that, you know, that becomes a new you thing. You sound so like my old boy, right? So my old boy were like, my old boy's always cooked, right? But pretty basic. So he'll go, there's it, it's been phases. You ask my sister, she'll tell you the exact same thing. Yeah. There was a phase where growing up, he made this lemon herb chicken. It was nice. I go, fuck, that's all right, boy. I'm, I swear to God, we had it every night for like two <laughs> years. And then, and then you, it's just, yeah. Every night he cooked for two years, it was lemon herb chicken. At the moment, it's Portuguese spiced chicken wings. Yeah, right. <laughs> so dad, like every time he goes to cook dinner, oh, what do you reckon, chicken wings? Yeah. Portuguese spice and I'm like fuck mate I've had them that many times I prefer tuna and rice tonight they're good but you're killing them <laughs> yeah it's like things are good in moderation yeah yeah you know? 100% see I'm allergic to onion oh, oh shit that that's, so, that's the worst it's, it's the only annoying. worst thing you could be allergic to would be garlic, garlic. Yeah. which I'm, I'm fine with garlic well that's alright it's, it's great because it's great it's so it's good like, geez, bro have you ever had a Lebanese um, burger from um, Chico's never I mean, 
they're gone, but your breath is oh. reeking. Yeah, reeking. Like, yeah. Bro, so You're not bad. doing that on a date. Nah, no chance. Mm-hmm. To- like, talk, talking yeah. about dates, Jimmy's been having a crack. Yeah, both the boys. A bit yeah. of arthritis in the thumbs from Jimmy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a, lo- a lot of texting. Are we talking? Are we talking socials or apps? Bit of both. both. Bit of both. Bit of both. So you know, there might be a lady watching. You never know. <laughs> what are you both. looking for? Nah, I'm not looking for anything now. Nah, uh, just just cruising. Just cruising. I've had me um, relationships and just sort of don't want a relationship. Just poking yeah. along the big fellas. Poking along yeah. I've been in so. one for too long and okay. just sort of want to be by myself. And bit of you time now. Bit of me time. No, it sounds a bit cheesy, but it's something you've got to do. No, it's, it's healthy. Like, yeah. It's good for and you. And the best sort of thing is I'm with these boys every day, so it's, yeah. I don't know, like, how do you put it? Like, it's... It's just a good laugh being just, with them. Just yeah. like, it's, 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 Jimmy hasn't... Bro, Jimmy's been in a relationship forever, like since, well, since, since, I, was since I left. Since high school. Yeah. Since yeah. I left to come down. Yeah, wow. He was with his partner and... My and, best uh, was about three months, and that's not for lack of trying. Mm, yeah. I'm, I'm shit ass at a relationship, eh? Yeah. Actually, I don't know if I'm shit ass. I just haven't found the right person. I'm sure you will, bro. Yeah, it'll yeah. happen. It's never you, it's always them. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I always yeah. say, anyway. Yeah, I like that. So, talking about the dynamic, if, so one of the boys meets a girl, they're keen. Is there, like, a process of, like... When she leaves, say she comes over for dinner, she leaves, the boys sit around there talking. Because you, obviously you debrief. Yeah, we talk about de- you got Well, we debrief. debrief and we, like, talk before as well. Yeah. yeah. A bit of... Like, Is there warnings before? A bit of lads talk. Oh, uh, not really. Like, S- sort you, of. Like, so say he's bringing a new girl to the table, hey, I've got, I've got someone new, right? Yeah. It's Is always going, a what do you boys, think. Don't yeah. Yeah. Is yeah, he going, you... don't come on. First, oh, we, he's not that silly first we've got to get the sort of, like, um, what's the, the word? The lay like, of the land, almost, like, know what you're dealing with. Yeah, and, like, I guess a bit of an approval, like, what do you think, or... Yeah. Yeah, and then, yeah you, you go through that process, you have a look, you suss it, you suss it out, and yeah. the, boys, the boys sort of... Sometimes I think they're more you, interested you, or, than I am. We'll give you two cents, and then, uh, <laughs> say again? Sometimes I think they're more interested <laughs> than oh, I man, am. Yeah, used to. Are more interested, like you ask more questions than I do. Yeah, so yeah, you're a bit more like uh, they ask me, like, does she do this? And I'm like, I don't know. Yeah, like, okay. What are you talking about? about the other, the other, a while ago, we're talking to Josh here, and uh, he's talking about going on a, on a date with a chick, just going on um, having a coffee date. And I'm just like, all right, right, so like, you know, when you see her, like, you know, because you know, you know when you go in and you, yeah. you give someone like a kiss or yeah. you just give them a kiss on the cheek and then you, you harp in and then you don't you don't know if they're going to try and cuddle you yeah. and then yeah. and then it's like, well, you're just going for a cuddle and then they're going for a kiss yeah. and then you just, you, like... Awkward. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's a bit of a funny one. So I just yeah. feel like the, the best thing, you just go, boom, you're straight in, kiss on the cheek and you bring them in for a cuddle straight away. So it's, so it's just like... Got to go for you, you got you got Yeah, got to be confident. Go straight in. Yeah. Confidence Otherwise, kept. Yeah, hesitate. And yeah, it's over. It's, there's nothing worse than if, if it just yeah. starts, bro. Just like, especially if you're trying to make, like, I'm just saying with Josh here, like, if you're trying to make a good impression on a new bird and you, you're going, yeah. you, you don't want, you want to start it off with a bang. Yeah. You want to, yeah. So we're just sort of trying to say, we're trying to suss that out, but. Do you, are you, are you use like light-hearted conversation first date or you're ripping right in there? Nah, you're light-hearted, I think. Fuck, I'm, I'm, I'm way too deep. Really? <laughs> Fuck, I'm, Talk to, talk to us yeah, the last go. one. Go. I last for the. I don't know if I last Yesterday, one's. Go. I don't know if the last one's watching, but you know. Um, That's alright. The last one didn't go to play. The last one was going good. It's yeah. A good solid month. It was kind of when I was like, I think it was when we sort of caught up when yeah. we went for the run. Remember? Yeah, right. I'd been seeing someone and it was going great until she done something fucking really stupid. Oh gee. And like just won't throw her on the bus under camera, yeah, no, but no, you know no, something, no. Do that. something pretty silly. But I was like, to be honest, I. I feel like I'm in a good place in my life. Like I'm doing what I love. Yeah. I've got good shit happening in my life. But I was kind of like disappointing because it derails the train. You know, you're moving yeah. in a good direction, but yeah. you're like, fuck, you made a mistake. You fucked up. I've got nothing against you, but unfortunately, trust is broken. Like, yeah, it's hard trust to is a major. That. Yeah, trust is a major thing, right? And yeah. and for me, I tried to make a decision that wasn't out of ego. So I took some time to process it and think about it. But it just probably wasn't the right thing to move forward. And I'm like, that happens, you know. Yeah. If yeah. people are at different stages of their life, not everyone's That's not, right. not everyone's in the same so. headspace and same thought pattern. But I guess for me, like, I'm like, you know, I, I go deep chats from the guy. 
Like, I fucking know everything about Jim, you know everything about me. Yeah. So I'm, I'm pretty lighthearted. I'm not very serious very um, often. Yeah. Right, I, see, I disagree with you sometimes there. Like, you can have some serious, serious, deep, deep conversations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I've, I've walked into some of the conversations you used to have been involved in and there's some serious combos going on. Yeah. We talk about like, the weirdest shit. We have, we have some pretty strange, like deep, deep. We get very, very involved like, in the conversation. Sort of scientifically. Sometimes. Yeah. Are you emotional, fellas? Oh, uh, not really. He's probably more emotional than He'd we be are. more emotional. Yeah. Yeah. More See, up front. Yeah, up front. Up front. But like we're, I don't know, we've always been pretty behind closed doors if ever you and I definitely we don't really definitely. show our emotion too much yeah. like I don't know I think it's sort of like a tough act but like mm. we definitely hurt or taking the piss out of everything is more of a front sometimes. yeah yeah yeah, yeah for it's sure the better way and, to go and that's that's for anyone right yeah. like I feel like so I'm a hard on my sleeve kind of guy eh? yeah. like you know exactly how I'm feeling like I just yeah I'm just set I'm either fucking no, I'm not crying on the first day, but I'm either like <laughs> fucking, you know, tears or like yeah. fucking laugh and yeah. carrying on. Um, yeah. I feel um, Jimmy's someone you can probably, you know, because I've got a different relationship with Jimmy as I do with Josh. And like, I'm sure it's, it's, it's the same vice mm. versa, you know. Um, but Jimmy, <coughs> um, like I feel, I feel with him, like he's sort of he can talk to more people like yeah. um, communication um, can probably see sides from different stories yeah. um, um, sorry see this fucking um, story from different sides where Josh bro he would just tell you straight up like what he thinks yeah oh, if you're more a fucking idiot just go yeah fuck off yeah kind of thing where he's just I like to give people a chance like, yeah where Jim, Jimmy's yeah. just sort of like tries to sugarcoat a few things and we're like oh no it's all I understand what you're saying and yeah. you know maybe make it this way or it's just like eh, whatever like, it's it, yeah I find it hard to see where it, maybe yeah, like if, if hide that sort of it even when I'm, I was talking to Jimmy about things that happened with, with Jimbo and say Josh and I talking about he's got, he's, Josh is just like I don't care like, I don't want to be involved what, just yeah, stop whatever. talking about it or like if just, we're talking about like so like as we're pretty close and we're yeah, talking sure. about like probably you know so a few like issues and I, I Zach's like always real concerned like he's a real concerned sort of person and I'm like mate he put himself in that position he's gonna be fine just let him deal yeah. with it yeah and like we had an argument in the car the other day actually yeah but you tell tell them why yeah yeah no tell no no exactly we won't go too far into it because it it spurred over the day but so it's still been going on. It still goes on. <laughs> we always bring it up. But so we were coming back from Kayama from a coffee. Yeah. Anyway, there was we were driving the, on the road and we went past a car and she was crying. Oh. She was born her eyes. Born her eyes. Oh, it man. looked like her. I didn't really think so, but uh, she she was, she was crying. Eyes. She was crying. Anyway, Zach was like, "Oh, look, I really want to see if she's okay." And like I was like, "Yeah, whatever." And then he kept going for a little bit, and I was like, "Mate." Honestly, what are you going to do? Are you going to pull over and try to help her? Or are you going to follow her to a house? I was like, you can't do anything. So, like, it's something you can't change, so don't get hung up on it. I was like, it frustrates me so much. Anyway, we end up having an all-out war all day about it. Yeah. Because I was heartless and I needed to drop my ego. And You are heartless. You've Mate. always been heartless. Bro, so yeah. How it went about was we were literally driving past this, this lady. And she, she was bought like, overtook her and looked, and you know, as you, you overtake it and you look into to the car, and she was, bro, she was born her eyes. She was, she was sobbing. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, this. and it was, Josh was obviously in the fashion so I'm like, mm. geez, this poor girl's born her eyes. And anyway, got back in front of her and look, was looking in her vision mirror, and she was sobbing. And I'm like, oh, fuck, man, I, I, want, I want to see if she's okay. Like, and he goes, oh, well, like, what are you going to do, honestly? Like, well, you're just going to pull over and then go and check to see if she's all right, blah, blah, blah. And he just goes, it just, it infuriates me like, that, you, that you're like this with, with that. He goes, it just, it just infuriates me. And I said, it can, it can infuriate you all you want, but I fucked the piss out of you, so who cares? Yeah. And so I said, say, don't, that. don't worry about that. I said, I'm yeah. a blogger. I said, don't worry about it if it infuriates you or not. I want to yeah. see if she's okay. And he goes, mm, I don't reckon you're fucking out. <laughs> he goes, I don't reckon you've got enough money about you. 
<laughs> Josh has been in a few bum fights over his years. Yeah. Had a had a bit of liquid courage over his time and yeah. so he reckons if he, he was trying to justify to himself a that street he, fight. Yeah. That he that he'd flog me, which I disagree with. Yeah. I think I think confidence is key. Key, yeah. Yeah. But there's too much confidence. I'd reckon I reckon I'm going covered. <laughs> I reckon I'm going covered. So I don't want to get into it <laughs> because but we could talk this, about that forever. I, I feel like the promoter and business brain on me just went, let's set this up. Yeah, well, see, this KSI, is this, this, Paul, this, this is of, this is my this is my thing. In a ring with gloves and rules, he wins every day. Like we box all the time at home, hmm. and. Yeah, he smacks the shit out of me. You're talking like I'm just too slow. I'm just talking like yeah. He's he's talking he's talking streets, bar stores, <laughs> anything, okay. anything, any, any, any object, any any, any object. Yeah. Could be used to hit you. Over yeah, yeah. That kind of vibe. Yeah, yeah. Because but then, but then because that, he's a, that night, that night, him and him and um, Jimbo having a having a wrestle in the lounge, and Josh Josh almost like, <laughs> tapped himself out. He couldn't breathe. He was caught. <laughs> <laughs> Just Jimmy, yeah. so I still won, but because he got fucking twenty five, thirty kilos on me. But no, bro, it's, yeah. it's all funny games. We yeah. have some, we have some serious laughs, and we argue a lot, oh. all the time. Oh. Yeah, all the time. Yeah. all the time. But it's not because me and Zach are both Zach. always right. Zach and I yeah. are always right. So Zach's always right about something, and I'm always right about something. Jimmy sort and then of I've got to be like. No, I agree with Zach. Yeah. I agree with Josh. Sure. Yeah. Okay. You're yeah. the mediator. Yeah, but it still doesn't work because we just don't. Yeah, like, they don't. If yeah. Zach, yeah. if he agreed with me, Zach would be like, I don't care. It's and then like, if he know, agreed with Zach, I'd say. Hey, even further to what you said before, Dad and Mum are like on the verge of divorce, and the kids <laughs> trying to save the relationship. <laughs> <laughs> you know? He's just, he's just trying to make sure he's the just home trying, is fucking stable. He's the glue. He's the glue. Yeah. 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 No, it's, it's mad, bro. Like. We um well, we just need Stimo. We need Stimo down now. Mm. Yeah. Like and Matty who, who yeah. we went for a run with and that the um the other month and he's up he's up there. He's playing he, he's playing New South Cup for uh, me and him have had some Penny mm. Yeah, and J- Jimmy and Stimo had some funny times together and we went up to <laughs> Byron and had some funny times together and over the New Year. Because you went to Byron the day that yeah we ran so, eh? Yeah, we ran, we ran, um, went for so a So were you boys day. up there too? Nah, nah, we're, nah. we're back home working. Yeah, the boys are back home working. Someone's yeah. got it. Someone's yeah, got to work. Yeah. Can't all live the work. Uh, yeah, it's, it's like my job's the easiest job in the world to the boys. Like, not, not everyone can play footy and drink coffee, so. Yeah, exactly yeah. right. It's a, it's well, a they, hard they, lifestyle. Well, they still managed to get and fit some coffees and let me assure <laughs> yeah, you, they, 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 don't want, they don't want a coffee or seven a day, but, yeah. Mate, you know, you know what's cool? Like, it's, it's always... One of the things that I appreciate about the relationship with my mates now, I reckon is maybe the thing that I've been blessed with in my life is like really good mates, really good relationships. And I look back and my, my biggest issue is always if I wanted to catch up with all my mates, where the fuck do you fit so many people? Like I'm so lucky to have so many good people yeah. in my life. And a few of them that have been there like you boys from you know day to like really early days. And something you cherish when you get to this age. Mm. Like, these are all what now? 23? 23. 23 this year. 23, yeah. Yeah, yeah so yeah, it's really like, I'm, I'm 25, 26, and all my mates, I've actually got a really, like, some of my mates are like late 30s, some are like early 20s, um, like such a mixed range of sort of ages, yeah. and my old boy is like one of my best mates, we're heaps tight, and he's 56, yeah. like, yeah, that's right. so that's good. It's, it's cool, but you really appreciate that when you get to this stage of your life, and you're all trying to accomplish your own things, mm. and... Um, it's like you need good mates. You need a good foundation of people you can go to. Yeah. We've Where all was... got we've all got separate mates. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. But yeah. it's like us four. We just always come back to each other. You know, yeah. like yeah. we spent we spent we spent so many years apart. Like Zach was up here. We well, he's been up here for eight years. We me and Jimmy'd come down all the time, and Stimo was living in Melbourne. And then he went to so, Sydney, and then. Yeah. We've yeah. spent a fair time to, apart, but it doesn't feel like it, you know. Like we're see, we'll call each other just because we're bored and we just want to have a chat. Like, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I, I'd say, right, what's Stimo doing? And then after fun, I get off Stimo, I'll ring Josh, and then I'll ring Zach. Well, we'd have group chat, like group yeah. calls, all four of us all the yeah, time. Yeah, for sure. So yeah. it's um, it's funny when you think about it. Like, are we had the same. <clears throat> how many people do you reckon were in our year at school? 
So well, in year 10, there was 23. So, yeah, ours was, you were saying, yours was obviously K-12. Ours was, we had kinder year 10. Yeah. So, and we probably had 200 people at a, in our whole school. There was 100 people um, in secondary school. In secondary school. Yeah, yeah, so we, um, and pretty much, right, yeah, we, so we went to the uh, Catholic school at home. So, we yeah, had, obviously, um, us two boys, Stimo, and probably, what, five other boys? Six other boys? Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, there was... There was, there was probably about... There was probably about 12, yeah, about 12, 12 13 boys. Yeah. About 8 girls? No, it was more than that. Was it? Yeah. Yeah. What, we, yeah. How many do we, we had, have now? Well, we had two like classes. 20. We had two classes. For yeah, we had lots of When we were younger, we had a yeah. few. And everyone dropped off. So, like... Yeah. Uh, so, uh, like once you get to a, a certain... The high school, yeah, year yeah. 7, heaps of people go to the how many, normal high school. How many do you reckon we had in, your, in a whole class, you reckon? See, I was probably similar to you, but I only had, like, 40. Yeah. yeah. I, actually, we funny you say that. Because I bumped into a kid yesterday, a JD, he was working at JD Sports. He comes straight up to me, he's like, fuck, from school. He's like four years younger than me or something. Yeah. And I knew I knew his name, school was so small, he yeah. knew mine. Yeah. We we're having a yarn, and I'm like, yeah. well, like, fuck, it's funny, like, most schools wouldn't get that, like, four years apart, yeah. and you kind of know each other because it's so small. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it sounds like a similar vibe. Right, every single person, like literally, you would not, you cannot walk down the street of tomorrow and not know every single face. Yeah. 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 Literally, every single time, like. You're late everywhere because you're I, just talking to everyone. When I was at mm-hmm. um, well, what year did I leave? I left at the end of year nine, so I didn't do year 10 yeah. at the same years, but I knew every single person at our school. Yeah, yeah. We, we, every you, you know every single person. And From kindergarten all the way to year 10. Yeah, yeah sure. And, but right, it was by far, like, the. It's by far the best bit of, um, like, we had the best childhood, man, and, like, it, it, it puts it more in, into, like, a bit of, bit of perspective, like, I mean, Josh and I, especially, we were in trouble at school every day, mm. like, right bags. and I mean, and when, and when you look at it in comparison to, like, when I first moved down here, yeah. like, I mean, at, at, at school, like, you would never let on your phone like we had shirts tucked in we had tires mm. like yeah, if we wore you, black you know, socks if you we were, were in wrong, trouble wrong shade of yeah. grey socks we were you in know, like, it, yeah. was, it was strict it was mm. strict at, at school but I mean we, we'd just get distracted by each other like when we were in class we'd, we'd just we just walk and yeah. like, we used to you know, I, I, probably, I probably wasn't the easiest like I mean same with Josh like you know because we know best so yeah. like we yeah probably you, you, you were there, a little yeah. bitch back then you always if you had the brain now back then it would, would be a lot worse expelled. I would be a lot worse but yeah we used to get in trouble all the time we used to just laugh but, all that, but it wasn't even it anything bad it was just like back then, then we felt like we, would, yeah. we yeah. were the worst of oh, the no. worst because that's the way we got like perceived by the teachers but like we're the I worst ever here, and bro, I remember when I first come down here I was like a golden child at school <laughs> and like that was completely like left field of what it was like back home because yeah, where were like, you? You were at Fiji, I went to Fiji B- yeah. Hawaii and like so many people that had, like, were just on their phones in class and I'm like, Jesus Christ. Like, yeah. we, like, you would have got, got crucified if you had your phone out. Like, even yeah, like yeah. at recess and lunch, no like, you'd be like in your out. bag, like looking at it in your bag so no one saw it. Because yeah, like well, you'd, yeah. get, you'd yeah. get crucified. For no, it. Like, you, you could not be on your phone on nothing or... I was know. pretty behaved in like primary, but when I got to like high school, me and my mates would play around a little bit and we all thought, well, fucking hilarious and... You know, yeah. like, you, you just want to push the teachers yeah. a little bit to see how much you can get yeah, away with. 100%. Yeah, but literally, bro, we couldn't get away with it. Because <laughs> like, everyone, everyone knows mum and honey Heather and Chrissy yeah. and mum's yeah. a local hairdresser. So if, if something goes wrong, and like the, the ladies that are in the, that work in the office at home. So every time you're in trouble, the ladies that work in the office are all of our family friends. Yeah. So it's like... And your mum's a hairdresser right back home, so it's it gets straight And home. our mum's a bartender yeah. too, so I see everyone. Yeah. It's mum and only Heather's best mate that works in the office. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so like... They grew up, well. grew up school with her too. Yeah. You know, where... You, a lot of... Know, actually, shout out to a lot of my teachers because they listen to the pod. Yeah. I'm still like mates with heaps of my teachers on Insta and shit. This is like, this yeah. teacher yeah. that, that are legends. Like, I, I, um, I still talk to, yeah. Yeah. So, some legends, yeah. Alright, let's talk, because obviously childhood's a big part of like the foundation of your friendship, but also who you guys are as people, and coming from a country town, very family orientated mm-hmm. and very mates orientated. I'll go to each of you individually, start with you, Josh. What do you reckon would be the biggest lesson that you learn out of your childhood, or even like your teen years, the last few years of your life? That's a tough question. Um, 
you know what, like it's probably the biggest thing I've learnt is like I always like to do things on my own. Yeah. Like I like to do, I like to like rely on myself a lot. But it's always good to have like a good group of mates that you can go back on and, you know, sort of, especially with these two and Stimo, like there's not anything that we don't know about each other. Yeah. So like it's, it's easy, someone to vent to and it's just like a bit of a release really. Yeah, and that's probably the last probably five years of my life, not really young. Because when I was young... You don't you appreciate know, it when you're You don't. And, like, I've got a pretty small family, so it was only me, mum and dad. That's yeah. it. So I didn't have any siblings. So these fellas are like my siblings. Yeah, of course. So, um, yeah, that's it. Just always... Surround yourself with good people is probably more what I'm getting at. Definitely. Like, there's... It's easy to put yourself in a group of people that probably it seems like a good idea at the time, you know, but at the end of the day, like, if you surround yourself with, um, you know, bad people, or not bad people, you know what, but, like, people that don't have the same, you know, future goals and that, you end up losing what you want to do. You lose track. You lose, you lose your, your sort of, your goals, where you surround yourself with these boys... You like you just thrive and you you get to do what you want to do and you get to really you know push on your dreams and bounce off each other. So yeah, that's definitely. probably one thing. Jim, really. um, I don't know. Like back home, I'm so much a people person. Like yeah. I sort of love to be around the boys and all this and that. Like I so I have done my knee. Yeah. I done my knee twice and that sort of um, stopped me playing from footy. Yeah. And I wasn't sort of, uh, I had a missus at the time and that was all cool and all that. But um, I was probably in a little bit of a dark place at home because I wasn't doing what I loved and all this and that. But once I sort of got back into footy, it was the best time of my life. I had the best fun with the boys. Like after training, we'd have a few beers and that and get home at like 12 o'clock and yeah. then go to work in the morning and whatnot. But um, I don't know, sort of. It's hard to say. I've always, yeah, been a people person, but I've never sort of had, I don't really know how I'm getting that. Like, I, can't, I kind of can see what you're getting at though, maybe like that relationship with yourself, because when you're stripped away from y- your support group, like yeah. you need to have that strong foundation. Yeah, but like, I always had these boys, I had my missus that time, I had mum, had my little sister, but as it sort of put too much time into himself, you know, yeah, and, like I've, and, and it hasn't been, it hasn't been for Jim, for Jimmy, you know what I mean? He, I've he, always, he's given, always given, given, there. Give. yeah. And as as I was saying before with Jimmy, like Jimmy's always there and and talks to people about anything and all the time. Like I know I can talk to Jimbo about anything. Where Joshy's like I can talk to Joshy about anything, but he's just like yeah, no, nah, it's, it's it's just not for me, you know what I mean? Like yeah, where Jimmy, me and Jimmy like, are probably the polar opposites. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. I was always about myself. Where Jimmy, Jimmy, will, and he's always about Jimmy other is. Well, I, I know, I know everything person. about everyone back home, yeah. everyone yeah. up here. I'll like, really tell Zach all these yeah. stories, and he was like, but, oh wow, and then Josh. When Jimbo won't. Jimbo doesn't dedicate enough to himself, you know what I mean? Like it's 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 more like he he, he just. He takes and takes and takes, and like f- with people, like takes in everything and, and gives back to people. You know what I mean? Like he doesn't give himself any time. Yeah, and, you know and what? In, if you know oh, what I'm saying. Start of oh, maybe a month ago, end of Feb, last day of Feb, got on a flight. Took one of my goals for this year was to go on a solo adventure. Yep. So I booked myself eight days in Port Douglas, fully Ooh. solo. Went up, had a few days of adventure, but I had six days of just doing fuck all by myself. And it was for probably the same reason. I fucking loved it. Yeah. Because very similar to you, my whole life I've been like a bit of I'm an agreeable person by yep. nature and I wanna I want to make people feel good. I'm a people pleaser. Yep. So same as me. I'm always one of my mates needs something, I wanna be there straight away. Yep. And it means sometimes I drop everything I'm doing or maybe everything I need to focus on to help someone else. And I found that going away, I didn't know why, but I was really frustrated just mentally frustrated not like not in a bad place just like I felt like mine was just all over the place like I had no clarity 
and I went away and I was like, I want to figure out why I'm just a bit frustrated. And I actually remember going away, being as close as I am with my family, and I said to my family, fuck, I might need a minute here, like, just not to be calling every day and just off my phone. But I got up there and I pretty quickly on the first day realised that there were the people I wanted to be speaking to still. Yeah. Yep. But all of the outside noise, like the people who I'm giving my time and energy to, who maybe I don't get the value back from, I was like, I need to, I need to cut down on that because when you give so much of yourself, you've got nothing left to give. And unfortunately, it means that you fall short. And that was such a lesson for me. Like being away, I turned off social for four days yeah. and I just fucking felt clear. Like yeah. I come back and I was like, something I've got to be mindful of, like having my time yep. and right. having the time where I'm working on my shit. Like, because sometimes you forget you got goals and things that you need to do That's yourself, right. right? So, man, I completely get where you're coming from. And it's, it's hard to put into words because it's so ingrained in, in who you are and your DNA that you yep. just want to be everything to everyone that until you actually step away from it all, you can't clearly see where you're going wrong. No, so something right. that I found was massive for me too. That is true, bro. Yeah, um, it'd be, I, I reckon people would just go leaps and bounds. And Imagine if you could go and just let go of your social media and that for a bit. It's huge. It's huge. It takes like, up so much of your day. Holy. So well, and it takes up so much of your thought space because you're always looking oh, at what everyone else is doing. That's, that's you're right, constantly yeah. comparing and it's just... Yeah. Like, it's a necessary evil for me because without it, this doesn't grow. Exactly. Yep. Right? But yeah. at the same point in time, it's the thing that makes you compare yourself to that. Yeah. Like, I don't have 11 million listeners like Rogan does. Mm, yeah. I don't have, you know, fuck, I should be doing this, I should be doing that. Yeah. So it, it's got its positives, but it's also got its negatives. And I yeah. think it's learning to understand and control that. What would you say has been the biggest lesson for you, Lowy? I know we spoke a little bit about similar stuff in our first, but maybe things have changed, I don't know. I would say, man, don't take life too seriously. Like, I mean, you know, obviously the thing I live by is hard work and um, the boys know firsthandly, you know, what, what goes into to being a rugby league player and, and being a full-time rugby league player, you know. So I feel, you know, my parents have, I've driven that into me is you know hard work and dedication, but man, don't take life too seriously. You're gonna be misunderstood by so many people, and and I and, and myself as a professional athlete, like yeah, you're open to opinions religiously week in week out on the da- daily and the regularly, and all you can do is go, you know what? Thanks for the feedback, but you you, you don't you don't know, and like you've got you've got you've got no idea what you're going what through. sort of yeah, what what we do. What, what I understand and um, you know what, what, whatever you want to have a crack at man have a crack at because at the end of the day you know your family can, can give you their thoughts but your friends can give you their thoughts but man nothing's nothing's ever promised and and you know that first and foremost man and yeah, um, nothing's promised so just as I said don't take life too seriously do what you want to do man and um, I feel like that, that's what I do every day like I mean being able to live with your best mates, it's not not many people do that, man. And and you know, as I said, it's it's like being on a holiday. Like, don't take everything too seriously. But but when you do, have a crack at it. You know Fun what I mean? Life, yeah. And you're in or you're out. You know what I mean? And you know you can do whatever you want to do, man. I know that sounds cheesy as, but fuck, bro, hard work pays off, man. It does. It really does. Without a doubt. You you want to put the time and effort into anything. Man, I'm telling you, you do it. You do whatever you want. Hard work, dedication, discipline. You, you, you will not beat it. You know what? Being, something that I've found really interesting, right, is, it, is a few few people, like we live in the world now where one of the benefits of like social and all the media platforms we have is you get to see behind the scenes of, you know, some of the big figures in the world. Mm-hmm. Great example, Kanye just puts out his documentary on Netflix. Biggest thing that stood out to me was the first full episode of that is basically him just hearing no from a million people. Hmm. No, nah, stay in your lane, you're not gonna be a rapper, you're not gonna be a hip hop artist. No, 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 just kept trying. We it's, sit here now yeah. and you look at that and you go, one of the biggest artists in the world, one of the biggest uh-huh. brands in the world is yeah. Kanye West, right? 100. You don't sit there like without social, without that insight into his life before the superstar, you don't realize there are a whole bunch of no's but you sit and go, well, I could never be like that because that's Kanye. 
Same yeah. thing with like Will Smith, another dude on the wall who's been very controversial at the moment. Yeah. Um, his book, yeah. mate, he come from a way tougher life than I've come from. Mm. So if he's the man that he is today, if he's an Oscar winning actor, was a major hip hop artist, you know, he's done all the things that he's done in his life, why can't I? And I reckon the biggest blessing I ever had was being diagnosed with CF. Because fuck, it taught me that like, like you said, nothing in life is promised. Hard work. Well, hard work gets you to places you never thought you'd go. And I've had to work very hard to to stay on top of my health. Mm -hmm. But the biggest thing is, like, it's weird. I love hospitals, right? Sounds weird for someone who's had health issues. But every time I've ever had to stay in hospital, you learn so much about life. It's almost like, for me, like a retreat, like a mindset retreat. I remember one of the last times I was in, I spent two weeks and met this older fella, Ernie, who was dying of terminal cancer, right? And, and I was in a private room to control sort of lung infections and so I didn't get sick from anyone else and Ernie and I would become mates and he'd come around every day at two for a cup of tea and a couple of bickies and we'd sit and have a yarn. And he was a, um, he was a prison guard and wow. looked after dudes like Ivan Malat, right? Ooh. So he had some fucking stories. You know, Ernie and I'd sit there every day for two weeks for about an hour and have a yarn. And he never once talked about cars that he owned, houses he owned, things that were superficial. Yeah. It was always like, I think he's married three times, still great mates with all of his wives, ex-wives. <laughs> like, he'd had, he had kids, he had grandkids, yeah. he'd had great experiences, he'd done really interesting things. And that's what... And I remember sitting there at the time, I was, I was probably the same age as you boys are now, 23. And I was in a job I didn't love earning good money, great potential for my future ahead of me, just thinking, fuck, like, I I wake up in the morning, I dread work, I dread the day that's ahead of me. And I remember thinking, fuck, this cunt has not once spoken about anything that money bought him. It's all just the experiences of, like, having a crap at life and doing the things that make you happy. And for me, that was one of the biggest lessons ever, Mm. is, like, life is short. And so, like, make the most of it while you got it. That's right. Absolutely, bro. And that's what... You know, and I mean, you know, it's it's not that not that I'm lucky that I get to do the job that I've done because you know a lot of a lot of sacrifices and my family have sacrificed so much for me to be where I am. Like it's it's not by running. You know, it's it's taken years and years and years and years and years. Well, since we since I was four to be able to you know, there we are. play where I am. But um, that's what I say to the boys. Like I mean, do do what you want to do, man. Like. If you want to come, if you want to come live down here, you want to, you know, you want to pick up shit, and that, that's what makes you happy. Bro, do it. <laughs> like, but be the best mm. at it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. And that's where I feel our competitive nature still comes in. Like, I mean, Josh is doing security now, and and he still talks to me about security, and then tells me what what he he would do and and what he thought that that this yeah. bloke should have done and. And that, and along along them lines, with Jimmy's Jimmy's with with his roof and it still talks to me about. Oh, fuck, I don't know why he's doing that and Bob does doing it this way and. It's being know, a perfectionist and, and like trying to master your craft, yeah. day, whatever it is. Yeah, cool. and that, that's what that's what I feel feel it is, bro. But you know, don't don't take everything too serious, and and that's that's the best thing about it. It's still, as I said, bro. It's like being on a holiday, and I feel it's so so easy to just so chilled yeah and and it, it makes your footy better too man it does like i mean i mean, head I mean space. like we just we just crew we go play golf and i mean actually jesus and jimbo's jimbo's good for <laughs> jimbo's good for a dumb i'm a good he's, yeah. he's a real life happy gilmore yeah okay yeah. Real life. i'm happy too i've got too high course. expectations for myself yeah okay and then i'll get way too cranky i'm like head I'd, falls off my thing is, I'm never going to win a game of golf. I just want to look the best while I'm there. <laughs> Good yeah, fit, you know? Fair, I probably, I'll fit. probably need to take that. I'm rocking that up in a newsboy cap. Like, oh, I'm looking like that, 1920s on the golf course. That's good. I think I need to take on that because I'm not that great at golf. Drum and golf shell hard. harbour. The best. Check them yeah. out too. Yeah. Drum and golf. Drum and golf Check them out. Um, bro, you should have seen the dummy spit that Jimbo had the other day. <laughs> So I know I know everything how to swing all this and that, but watch a serious amount of golf. And I we'll love it. He used to Ma- Masters start today. Eh? Tomorrow. 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 Yeah. Used to play 
a serious amount of golf. The amount of golf that he plays to. See, back, back he home. Playing, he should be playing off one. <laughs> he should be playing yeah, alongside yeah. Tiger Woods, the amount of golf he plays. Back home, I used to um, go get a little dog. And yeah. um, every day after work, me and my dog would just go out the golf course and just play golf and that. And yeah, nice. It was the best fun. Like, I really enjoyed it. But, yeah, I have some dummy spits. Like... The I, other day, I, I, I threw. Story. I was recording. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah I threw me driver. I've reckoned I've broken how many clubs? You reckon too many clubs. Yeah. Too look, many. sometimes, look if he hits a bad shot, I quite hit the deck because yeah. I know there's going to be a club flying somewhere, yeah. Yeah. and you just don't know where it's coming. Yeah. So it's it's not good. Look, he he hit like. 42 balls into the water the other day. <laughs> Exaggeration. And he plays so much more than me too. Yeah. I beat him every time. He walks off. A bit of mayo. Anyway, <laughs> he gets his driver. Like he's do got. Do I, don't I? Do I, don't I? You can see that I've got his face. Yeah, yeah. I can do yeah, that. So you go, tell the camera. Tell the camera. Do I, don't I? Not all the time. I've beaten him twice. <laughs> how many times? Twice. I've won twice. Huh? And how many times have you played? Oh, I don't know. Ten. How many times? Thousand. <laughs> and you beat me. How many? Yeah, it's all right. I don't think Josh, yeah, remember those Josh, Josh has definitely never beaten us. That is for sure. No, I'm just there for the. But wait, but in a straight fight, <laughs> I win Please. every day. <laughs> jeez, bro, jeez, we had a proper debate about that because um, Blake Laurie, I was telling you, Blake um, Block is one of my best mates in my footy team. And I said, oh, so you beat Blocker too? And he goes, yeah, easily. Told Blocker, he was fuming. He was speechless. He was speechless. So they got so, such tickets on them, these fellas. You've got to bring them back to yeah. earth every now and then, you know? <laughs> like, I'm really, I feel like I'm really good for the boys for that. Like, you know, they think they're just that uh, cut above. Grounding, I'm just like, very you're not. Grounding. I am. Yeah. I, I am. Yeah. I like it. Mm. And to be fair, though, you kind of want your Seki to be able to handle himself, you know? Like, <laughs> you know, if you can't, you're starting to worry. <laughs> no, yeah, you can't wait worried. till there's a streaker and you go in and get it. No, that won't be my job. God. As if. How quick, quickly on that note, obviously like Buddy's thousand, you would have you would have seen all of that. Yeah, at that's the AFL. Sick, right? Did you see that? Well, they did, that for his... did you see that Seki trying to stop people, and it just got to the point where he's just like, <laughs> what a waste of time. What a waste of time. What a waste of time. Bro, I will tell you the scariest thing was. Oh, PG, PG, PNG. Yeah, PNG, PNG. But when I ever played going footy in PNG, Aussie and uh, um, Prime Ministers. Mm. I was kicking the goal from the sideline, and the PNG crowd were. They're diehards. Yeah, they love That's it. their religion. And, and like, literally, yeah. bro, you drive in there and you get, you got to get escorted everywhere, and you drive in there and there's just people mate, on the streets to, the, holding the buses it's, it's up. It's unbelievable over there. They're just everywhere. It's like you're you're a god when you go over there. It's like, mate, and like. I was literally kicking a goal, ran back to the um, back to the troll line to receive the kickoff, and I was seeing like Big Woodsy was running into the into the sheds. <laughs> David Clemmer, like you had the whole how the whole team were running into the sheds, and, and everyone from just where I kicked, they were all sprinting on the field. So it was like everyone was chasing after me, and I was like, oh, it's like that scene out of um... I'm like I'm gone. Um, and then, Gilmore. anyway, no, bro, um, you should have seen the security guards. They had sticks just smacking, like, everyone. And, and I, remember, I remember watching the security guards, and they were just smacking, like, um, just these, the fans. And I remember going, like, trying to, trying to, like, tackle the fans. Just be like, no, 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 like, it's okay, it's okay. And I was, I was like, that bro, because yeah. these security guards were just flogging them, bro. It's crazy, yeah. And I was just like, and, and they were just getting decked. And they'll get up and run again. And I'm like, yeah. fuck. You know, it's crazy. This reminds me of And it just so. makes you think, like, like BNGs, bro, they are that tough. Like, mm. it's like J- Justin Olam. I'm yeah. dreading the day that I come up against him because he's just like a... Brick shit ass. Yeah. Brick shit ass, he's a, oh, bro. And he just, just comes at you 100 miles an hour. And no I, just know, I just know I'm going to be here for a long day. So I've heard stories, it. right? Um, two, actually, two podcast guests of mine who have become mates. Brett Canellan, so Brett um, was tapped by a bull shark, lost mm. part of his leg. Oh, okay. Great story, awesome yeah. fella. Um, he's a great surfer and was over in Fiji on a surf trip with Jimmy Stora. And yeah, right. so Jimmy's, Jimmy's um, 
played for Fiji, Fiji, Fiji yeah. three World yeah. Cups, like just a Who's captain of yeah. yeah, he's a legend, right? And and Jimmy was over there because Jimmy's a good surfer too, so they were yeah. over there with DP surfboards doing a like a little doco thing in Fiji. Yeah. And Bretto said that like anywhere Jimmy is in Fiji, he's like that guy's a king. There's people yeah. banging on the cars trying to get photos with him try, and he's like yeah. it was wild yeah. and he's like because he's so humble he would never mm. say that but he's like it's insane and for a lot of those island countries like their sport is their religion he goes right. for it it's like Mika yeah yeah he just he runs a show over there too like he's a tank bro yeah he is that he, <laughs> he is, is a tank no. loves, a, loves a little flick pass Loves to receive a flick pass. Uh, uh, when they're not in, in the stand not, three rows yeah. back. <laughs> <laughs> he's a tank, bro. There was yeah. one that nearly got away last week. Yeah, I uh, spew on put on his shoulder. But, but yeah, good chance your arm here and there, right? Yeah, he's all right. I mean, he finishes nine, so he's a big bass. I'm not tapping on him. Mm-mm. No, bloody hell. Ta- no. I've Maybe practiced him at eight this year. All right, we'll get there. We'll get there. Yeah. Um, what, what do you think is... Um, What's probably the thing for you personally you want to work on the most this year as a, as a rugby league player? Like, staying on the field, man. Like, I've been mm. I've been injured the last couple mm. of years. Um, you could have played 100 games by now. Um, yeah, it feels like well, I only played, I played 54, 55 games now. I played my 50 at the start of the year, but you know, it feels like the slowest 50, game, 50 games ever. Like, yeah. I mean, you debuted at 18. I mean, being injured and, oh, and just, just being shitty injuries, man. Like, Thumbs, you know, wrists, um, and sort just, of unavoidable stuff. Yeah, man. just yeah. just shitty injuries, you know, like just cops on elbows, head, and um, but man, that that's pretty. And just just trying to, I just want to stay out there and, and play and try and and play full full season. Like I mean, have you played a full season yet? Yeah, it was not last year year before. Oh, I yeah. got that, that yeah. season out. And, um, but that that's the main thing, bro. Aren't we? I want to play finals footy. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Can I ask, what, what's been the biggest surprise this year? Because footy's weird this year. Like, some some teams look great one week, different team the next. The comp almost looks in a way like it's kind of levelled out a little bit. It's, and some um, of the off-season trades have held that and buys. And the thing that you'll find with, with NRL is you'll play about 10 real good games. You'll play 10, 10 sorry, 10 games where you know, you gotta you gotta find you know, and just find the two points somehow. And then the other five games you probably have five real shitty games. And then the other five games you play real real good games. So you about yeah. five five real good games, five shitty games, and the rest of the ten you just you know, you gotta find the two points and, and there there you there you good wins. Yeah. There you wins it. And that's that's our hook sort of um hook's analogy and and it's and it's true as like I mean you know, the start of the season, man, there's always, like, you look at the how many errors there are in a game and um, myself included and, like, but it's just to start the season until about probably round 13, 14, 15, that's when most teams start to hit their straps. And, yeah, when you want to hit your straps yeah. too, like, you want to be coming in hot for the finals. Yeah, and that's the, that's the thing, like, I mean, there's so many different different positions that people play, like, I mean, mate, we've had, we've had boys that have been playing fullback and um and now some of the boys are playing halves some of the boys have been in back yeah. row being in the halves now and you know you you, cha- you it changes and chops and changes and you know you find your happy medium and then you know that's when you start to brain these are a young side so much youth in your side now like you've got some veterans there yeah. but there's so much youth especially around the spine and some of those kids it's going to take time yeah without a doubt and you just you, you know you just gotta persist and, and you know that, that's where your learning comes and you know, I know as a young boat that, you know, the, your best bit, your best way to get confidence is just to keep playing, bro, and to play footy sure. and play minutes. And, um, you know, the, boy, the boys know first and foremost, like, the, the, the roller coaster of rugby league and, excuse me, how, how can it affect your, your confidence and that kind of stuff because, bro, it smashes your confidence. Yeah, like, buddy. Man, you look at the best teams in the comp, like, right now, um, let's say Pan- the Panthers. Yeah. Like... I mean, they're all on the same page. They got, it's they're just playing with so much confidence. Like every every player across the board, like so, and and, and that's, that's we well, see it at the start of the season. Yeah. Sean O'Sullivan comes in, hasn't been playing NRL. Yeah, 
Comes takes in, control of the do. team, looks great. Yeah. You're yeah. just rolling off the back of the confidence that you get from yeah. being in a, in a system where it's all figured out. Yeah, confidence is huge, man. In, in any anything. walk of life, yeah. Like, yeah, same as doing your podcast, man. Like, yeah, confidence is huge, bro. Like, 100% it is. I think 100%. It, I think it's massive, bro. But, um, so, yeah, same as doing anything, bro. But I think we'll be all right. I, I honestly feel, I feel we'll be good. Um, you know, there's a few boys that are coming off contract too, so playing um, hard. We will play yeah. well. Play for so, the contract. Um, I, I guess that that's like it's like every team. I'm, I think there's a fair bit of change over this year within um, amongst the whole comp. So definitely, it's going to be um, interesting, especially with the new the Dolphins team coming out, bro. They've they've only signed what three players. Hmm. They're struggling to sign, eh? So... I think they wanted KP, but he's committed to the Knights, hasn't he? Yeah. I don't know, do they? Is, is it done? It said something the other day. It said... Yeah. Apparently there's a bit know, of but, drama over that, I think. But there's got to be some... There's got to be some... I reckon Munster. Munster's there has to be some signings. Mun- right. I reckon Munster will go. He will go. But, in a way, I don't reckon Storm will let him go. Mm. It's hard. But it's see, tough. But where are they going to find the money? Because... Yeah. So... They just signed Grant, Hughes and... Xavier Coates. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I don't know. I feel really good. Wayne Owen. Wayne Owen have his ways of getting people where he needs to be. Yeah. But it's, it's kind of like that nervous jump. Like, you can imagine as a player, like, you've just signed a new contract, so you're in the gong for a while, right? But as a player, you're looking at a new club and you're going, fuck, how long is it going to be until we're in a position of, to win lots of footy so games? So you don't and know. Like, you, yeah. Well, Melbourne Storm come in 98, they want Grant Fallon next year. Yeah. So yeah. It, success can come straight away, or it can be like Titans. They haven't played. Well, they played like maybe seven finals. finals games. Yeah. I don't even know if they played that many, have they? Yeah, I don't know. I, I think they've been maybe one or two seasons of clinching yeah. that spot. Yeah. They've been in here for like what's that? Fifteen years or something. It's a tough one, yeah. right? Yeah, it's, it's 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 hard. I mean, well, even um, well, Jimmy's actually gone back to play for tomorrow. So my, my brother Halo, he's um, he's He's back there um, now. I think he's going to sort of help captain coach there with, with Josh and Macron. Oh, yeah. And um, so Jimmy's going to go. What position are you playing? Yeah, I don't know. I was playing five eight last year. Yeah. And it was so good to play under Josh. Josh just helped me so much with, like I thought I knew footy. Yeah. But just insight of like little things, where you got to be, what you got to do, and all this and that. It was so. Was Was Josh I, at Canberra? Yeah. 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 Yep. He played like 19 of his career there and then played a year or two, didn't he? Played yep. two yeah. years at Dragons. Two years at Dragons. Yeah. Yeah. Won a comp with the Cutters, reserve grade. The Cutters had a good side for yeah, a while. Yeah, they had a real good side. Yeah. Red hot side. But yeah. yeah, so Jimbo's going down there. Jimmy loves his footy. He asks, Jimmy asks questions all the time. Yeah, yeah it's mad, eh? Love picking his brain about it, like I would say. Like, when we're watching it, I say, why, why did you do that? Or why, do you, why don't you do this? Or whatever. And I just love it. It's oh. so good. And it's so good because Josh has a footy head too, Stim has a footy head too, so you can just have mad chats about it. And See, more I, I personally love it so much. They probably get annoyed with it, but yeah. I love it so much. See, my dream going, growing up was to play rugby league, but yep. when I was young, having liver disease, my liver started to get big, and so I was hanging out of my rib cage. So oh. they were like, mate, you've got to rupture your liver if you keep playing footy. But I loved it that much during high school. We had a shitty high school team because we had like 40 kids in our year, right? So basically every dude was forced by me and my mate Reese to play on the footy team. Yeah, right. It was like, we need numbers, you're playing. Yeah. So yeah, our bench was like same. four wingers because it was just yeah. four kids who didn't <laughs> want to be there. Yeah. Like, just thinking, fuck, I've got to play. Bro, and that was... We were, we were the exact same. Yeah. Just you're pulling... I remember we used to walk around the school, right? And to the point where I wasn't supposed to play, my doctors didn't know, but we, my dad used to get like a camping mat, like from Clark Rubber, and I'd tape it around my guts with duct tape so I could barely breathe, but it was like, if I got hit, hopefully your liver doesn't burst. Wow. I just wanted to play that much. Yeah, yeah wow. that's good. And that's good. I remember we'd walk around the school and Reese would go, fuck, that new fella's pretty big. <laughs> <laughs> what do you reckon? I'm like, yeah, for sure. Go Recruitment team. Hey, mate, here you go. Have you ever played footy? No, nah, I haven't play anything no, well really. we're going to show you where's the football and I guess you're going to have to learn how to run it and tackle so yeah, that, the, bro that's the same as like back home. Well, we were the, very lucky back yeah, home yeah well, the school that we went to so St. Anne's it was pretty much everyone that was at St. Anne's pretty much played it was like our team for yeah. tomorrow, tomorrow Dragons but see he's so, a country boys he's a tough eh? 
Yeah. We, well, we actually, we, we could never field a side. So we always like, of we, full yeah. rugby yeah. league players for school football. Yeah, we all, nah. like, because AFL and soccer. And yeah, so we'd yeah. have soccer players playing and AFL players yeah. playing. Which like, I remember, I remember we got, own. Yeah, 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 100%. So we used to go to Sydney schools. Yeah. And I remember our coach was like, like one, like he was high up in the school boys football. Mm. And he were, he was a teacher at um, school, Mellon. Yeah, oh. Mellon. And um, he always coached all of our sides. And he was standing there, we were playing at, were we playing at Bathurst? Um, like we were playing at Bathurst against, um, it was a massive school. Like we were playing, um, it was a big school. And he goes, oh, how many students do you have to pick from? And he goes, oh, I think we had like... 3,000 boys or something yeah. like in the region to choose from and then he's like oh, how many did you have to choose from he goes well actually four of our players two would play soccer and two play AFL yeah. and he goes what how did you get this far it's just we we all loved well, we playing. come second in the state That's and it's funny nice, yeah. like two years before that the same like St. Anne's Hato like in mm, yeah. a year above um, they actually won the whole comp yeah, wow. So we've had we've been very lucky, like produce sorta, some good footy players. Yeah, we've had, had some. We've good had pretty look, pretty good teams. Yeah, throughout the years. I think I've, like we've uh, we won three grand finals. Hado won four. You above won one. That's I think mad. I think I've won. I've played eleven grand finals for tomorrow, like including Rugby Union won nine of them or something. Mm. Just yeah, been real, we've been real lucky with the talent we've got back That's home. Right. Like, also, Liam Martin as well. Like, he was another yeah. one that... Um, He's a great player, yeah. Yeah. It's a funny story for you, right? I remember being 13. We carved it up in the under-12s, right? Because we were like, no one had really got yeah, a beer yet. So this was like school. Oh, we used yeah, to play yeah. every Friday school, against yeah. like a couple of teams. Yeah, yeah. Loved it, right? We won 30, we had 38 games undefeated. Because our, oh. our teacher said, if he's go season undefeated, I'll buy his or Chico's. Because we played at Parish next to Chico's. And like, we fucking, like, that was our goal. That was like, it was always at the end of every game, fucking one step closer to Chico's, right? <laughs> we won the whole season. We got the 13, it's like everyone got big except us. And I still remember being down at Croom Park in, in Albion Park oh, there. Oh, yeah. We had this really tough first game we got belted, right? Yeah. Playing like, I'll. I was playing shit. Like, we just... Our bench was four wingers. Yeah. Well, three wingers and one front row. He was actually quite good, but, he'd, you know, he'd come on and give the other boys a break. And I still remember one of the boys rocked up in his grey school shorts oh. with sneakers on. It was wet. My dad had to give him a pair of footy boots from the car that were, like, three sizes too big for him. Like, Rory Sham was right. We've gone into this last game against Kira High. Six all at half time. I'm playing fullback, my mate's playing half. We'll both sort of, we'd, we'd kick in and play. And I go to my mate Reese, been one of my best mates from the age of four. And we were like sort of captains of the side, pick, basically picked the side, yeah. <laughs> like structured where everyone played. I go, fuck, we're gonna have to think about Phil goal when we get a shot, you know? Cause it's pretty tidy, it's gonna go down the wire. I think we end up getting beat 36-6. <laughs> that hurts. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm like, I reckon the try that we scored too was so marginal. I reckon he dropped it over the line. I reckon the ref just thought, fuck, he's come see one. Yeah, yeah, give it to him. So, give it to him. What do you reckon would have been our um, most sort of memorable game, you reckon? Mm. Well, that's Jimmy, I would say. <laughs> Uh, Jimmy's got sort know. of a weird brain. Yeah. Yeah. He everything. remembers same, everything. Yeah. Like he'll go, do you remember this? Like I remember that one at hard. I mean, it's oh like, yeah, it was. Yeah. I don't know. Well, that was yeah at hard. We were down. It was uh. It was. It was twelve eight. Twelve eight against Harden at Borua. Let's see. Even though it's scoring any fast. Worst memory ever. No, it wasn't twelve eight. It was twelve six. So, so no, 12-8, 12-8, 12-8. Just quickly to set the scene, you are playing half back then? I was hooker. hooker. He was fullback, he was front row. Well, front row, okay. Up the front. So, and, um, mix, a mix of positions. I think, that. yeah, Stimo was playing 5-8. That's where we won. We won. Yeah, we won. Yeah, yeah. We won. yeah. so we were playing, Stimo was playing 5-8, it was a scrum. Stimo feeds the ball, throws it to Zach, Zach's running, chips and chase, like probably 60 out, yeah. gets the ball back, steps fullback, scores, probably, oh, I think it was about... 15 in from the right hand touch line. 
has kicked the goal to win and slots it as, as usual. And that was yeah, sort of a bit of a right. memorable day, wasn't it? That like, was, yeah. Because, oh. That, that was like, they were like our rivals today. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, and um, that was so good to win. Like, it was yeah. always us and Harden. Yeah. And it was, yeah. If you beat Harden, it was, you're on top of the world. Like, that shit you'll never that. forget, though. Like, you'll be 60 yeah. telling that story in a pub. Like, yeah. I remember their, their coaching staff just hated us. Oh, didn't they? They just hated us. They just had it out for us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, bro, we'll get our kids a bit of an idea, but, um, but yeah. I caught a big spray in that from them after the game. Yeah, yeah. yeah coach. Coach of the other team was not happy Coach. with him because Coach he won the game for us. Yeah. Come and spray me and How old were you at the time? 13. I was 13 and it rattled me too. Mm. Yeah, I bet. It rattled me like, I remember my mum was on the side on it. Um, when I, I told my mum, I was, yeah, what, 13? 13. Yeah. And you can't, boy come up to me after the game and spray me. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. But he'd be my rep coach too. Yeah, okay. What is Frey about? It's like... Yeah. yeah, it was nothing. It's just like... Just a pure emotion. Just swearing yeah. at me like... Yeah. And then... Yeah, it was, it was rattled because normally like we, we'd always play and then directly after I'd take my jersey off and put je- um, yeah. brother's jersey on. We'd play up. And play in his, his team. Yeah. So, it would run straight up that field and run straight back on the, yeah, his team and play there. And I ran on I was rattled, bro. Like it fucking rattled me. And then anyway, I come off and then went and told mum and I was like crying and then she just lost it. Oh, mum yeah. was furious. And then, yeah, no, it was just, she did the fan. That's just like a little bit of stuff that like, you just used to, because you used to get shits all the time, like you lost it, mate. Mm. Oh, it wasn't my, my old boy was like that too. He'd get, he'd get furious if like someone had a crack at kids or like, my, my, old, my old boy was like a hothead. Like I said, he was a cop after 10 years. To the point where there's a story I love about my old man, a recent one. We've got a little dog, right? It's like my, it's like my child. He's pop. Dad's like pop. Granddad, right? Yeah. Little Jack Russell. It's five years old. Fucking the most gorgeous little dog. Lives in our apartment with us because I live with my old boy and his missus. And <laughs> we, we, you know, we're in town. A lot of junkies walk past. The other week, Dad and I are out. His missus Karen's at home with the dog. The dog's barking. At, the dog knows if you're a junkie or not. They can pick him. Right? And always barks at him, right? And he barks at this junkie <laughs> walking past. He and, you, Josh, as well. yeah. <laughs> and then the junkie yells out, like, fucking shut up, you little cunt, or I'll fucking kick you. And, to the dog? Yeah. And my dad's partner sees him, right? And she's like, piss off, you dickhead, or whatever. When dad gets home, she tells dad, dad goes, fuck, why didn't you call me? She goes, well, what are you going to do? Dad goes, no, fuck him. <laughs> Dad goes, what was he wearing? She goes, oh, it's that guy that always walks past in the green hoodie. So my dad doesn't sleep. He sleeps like two, three hours a night, right? He takes the dog out for a piss late at night, every night. He's out at midnight this night. It's raining. He's got his hood on. Sees a bloke walk past in the green hood. So he goes up to him in the middle of the night with the dog and goes, hey, mate, how you going? He goes, yeah, hey, good, mate. And he goes, recognise this dog? Guy goes... No, nah, mate, no, nah, nice dog, though. Dad goes, don't fucking lie. You told him to fuck off the other day and called him a cunt, didn't you? And the guy goes, oh, fuck, I don't know, man. And he goes, he's such a nice looking dog, though. And Dad goes, well, apologise. And he's like, fuck, I'm so sorry, little doggy. Like, like Pat and the dog. <laughs> and, yeah, and Dad's like, yeah, mate, like, don't be a cunt. Like, he's just a dog being a dog, you know? And the guy's like, oh, I'm so sorry, man. I'm so sorry. And he's like, oh, but he's such a good looking dog. And I'm like... Fuck, like, that's just my old himself. man to a T. Just like, just hothead, just like hates someone having it over him. Yeah. Like, lo- loves to rip it. <laughs> that's right, that's just to a T, bro. <laughs> yeah. Has to have a say, eh? Yeah. Oh, two all, cents. Always got to put yeah. the two cents in. Doesn't get me very far every sometimes, no. but. Yeah. I remember the other day, bro, I walked through with, um, we'll come back from Oz Tag. Ugh. Playing your Oz Tag again. I've got it on video. You come back in the car, and, um, Defensively, like, and so they were shifting, they were shifting off their side, and then anyway, he just sort of Josh was defending, and then anyway, shoots straight in front of me, and anyway, they then leave tipping, the hole, tipping, they leave a hole, and anyway, they end up going and stripping us and scoring us, blah blah blah. And just telling them on the way back, I'm like, bro, you, you know, you, you just got to stay with me there. I said you can't be shooting, blah blah blah. Anyway, I was telling him, I was telling him about what he what he should and shouldn't do there. Yeah. 
kicks up a stink. No, well, this is what you've got to do. You don't do it that way. So this is a bit of an insider how stubborn I am. This yeah. is okay. this is to a T. So he knows footy better than I know footy. Yeah. So he will tell me of course, yeah. how to defend. Yeah. And wouldn't wouldn't have it. He was right. No ifs or buts. Yeah. And he was just adamant about it. And then by the end of the conversation, he was trying to tell me that I would tell him about how to change. Like, obviously, mechanic knows how to do everything. Yeah, yeah. Like, he's got no yeah. idea about cars. He goes, I would zero. And it's like, and, and I was like, Joshy, it's like me trying to tell you what, how to, you know, everything with a car, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, oh, you, you did. You used to, like, with the back of the day. Fuck off, please. And then, <laughs> so, about, about halfway through, I was like, you knew you I'm were fucking wrong. wrong. He knew he was in the wrong. Yeah. But but you're too far. I was too way far too far. Wrong. And I'm like someone this that won't... This like, is his theory. Like, so... His like, theory was... If I'm aggressive up. enough and like, <laughs> you know, confident enough... I know he doesn't do it, but it's just like a second nature. If you're confident enough and aggressive enough and throw enough big words at people, sometimes you can, you know, just, just get past. Like, yeah, and you sure. go, that's a win. Yeah, fair but, play. Oh, I know with him because he knows me too well and he's just like nah so anyway I was way too deep in it and I just thought I'll keep going like, I'll keep arguing I'll go all day I'll argue until I die yeah anyway we sort of all settled down a bit and come back up and I was like I was so wrong I said but I was just too far in the argument to pull out <laughs> so I was like I've just gotta I just kept on trying to like divert down a little lane and yeah, go something yeah but he just wouldn't have it. But yeah, that's a hundred percent not like like all our conversations. I love it. I love it. That's literally us, bro. Fuck too. boys, we've been going for an hour forty. Hey, done. We might um, we might we might let it let it wrap there. Um, go have some brekkie or something, eh? Get yeah, get some yeah, food in. Um, want to say thank you for coming on. Thank you for drama. being here. Thanks, good to have you boys on for your debut. Yeah, no, um, good. good to have you back. So. And um, it's been a pleasure to hear the stories. Like I said, it's I can relate to it all because I've got very tight long-term relationships mm. with my mates. So it's nice. This is a unique dynamic. I've never done this before where I have like a past guest come back and, you know, bring on people who are part of their life. So um, it's been fun. Good buzz for Yeah, it's all a laugh. That's good. Any final words? No, just th- thanks for having us. It was awesome. It was yeah. a really good experience. No, I'm glad you liked it. Loved it. You good man, bro. So, yeah. yeah. Um, more often it's probably good 100% down, so yeah. always welcome always no, welcome bro. it's all um, it's all fun and games don't take anything too seriously that's it cool, man. everyone back home make sure you subscribe follow listen share this around get around the boys give them some love you know how it is um, pleasure to have you listening pleasure <laughs> to have you watching um, take care until the next time yeah